last Thursday morning, um, after my usual 4.30 a.m. run, okay, uh, yes, I wake up every day, 4.30, go for a run. So after my run, I was in the living room, around 5 plus, so I was cooling down under the fan, and then my home telephone rang. So oh, sorry, hey, 4.30, 5.00 plus in the morning, who would call? something bad? Why is this person calling the home phone and not the, and not the mobile phone? Then I was thinking, hey, is any of my family members not at home yet? All these thoughts went through my mind. I was wondering, then the funny, well, I was wondering all this, right? The phone was still ringing. <laughs> then I heard a voice from my back, oi, you don't pick up the phone, is it? <laughs> it was my mom. So she was saying, so she, when she said that, I was thinking, okay, I better pick it up. But whatever thoughts that I had earlier, okay, it was nothing of that sort. There was nothing serious. Apparently it was my aunt. She and my mom had some early plans to have breakfast together. So she needed to cancel. Okay, so based on that, okay, I'm what you call an overthinker. Okay, I think too much. <laughs> I keep hearing this phrase, okay, stop thinking too much. You think too much. Don't think too much. I keep hearing that phrase a lot. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether any of y'all hear it often as well. Okay, um, okay, but just to let you identify with it, okay, there's three typical signs that you are an overthinker. <laughs> First one, you hate one word text replies. <laughs> okay? If you take a long message after a hard day at work, you text your boyfriend and say, Oh, today this is my boss, this is my boss, that, and your boyfriend just replies, Okay. Or worse, K. Okay. <laughs> then you think, Why is this guy doing this? Okay? Then the second sign is if you put meaning to everything. Okay? For example, in class, you're sitting beside this pretty girl. So this pretty girl turns to you and says, Can I borrow a pen? And you've been thinking in your mind, Hmm. Why is she asking me for a pen? Why did she ask the other guy to the other side? Does she like me? <laughs> this is another sign you're probably an overthinker. <laughs> the third sign is you like to ask the question why. Um, you may not ask it outright, but you always wonder why, at least in your mind, like why this thing happened, why this thing happened. You always want to know why. So that's the third sign. So if any one of you all can, can relate to those, then my friend, you are an overthinker. <laughs> okay, but overthinking is not exactly a bad thing, what I'm trying to share with you is that overthinking can be actually a good thing. Okay? Um, why? There are three reasons as well. One, you are often treated by your people around you that you're quite reliable because you have you have thought a lot of things, thought about a lot of scenarios, a lot of, basically a lot of angles, so you, you, can, you can be dependent on to give trustworthy, very good advice. Okay? The second one is you're very observant. You tend to notice a lot of details. Then the third one is you have actually have high standard of yourself. Okay. Which I will illustrate later. You all don't agree with me so far. You all be convinced of this. Okay, my first story is actually uh, what I will call a police story. Okay, it's, I think you probably liked it. Uh. This was back in, uh, the date was September 3rd, 2006. It was my birthday though. Okay, uh, I was nine months into the police force. So, um, I was actually quite desperate to get my first good arrest. Lah. A good arrest means not any kind of arrest, means you get an award for it by the commander. Lah. Okay, so I haven't got it yet. And my rival back in the academy, Kun, he was already featured in the police magazine for arresting a serial flasher. Lah. No, flasher? Yeah, so, <laughs> so he got that. Lah. So I was thinking, ah, oh, this guy got it. And there I was at 9.30 p.m. on my birthday, in the team office, looking through the emails. And I was looking at this particular lookout email sent out by the intelligence branch, asking us to look out for three wanted Chinese housebreakers. They were serial ones, so they wanted by three countries apparently. If you include Singapore, there are four countries. So now I turned to my teammate who was inside the office as well. His name was Gabriel. Gabriel, this is kind of rest that we have to make, man. And he said, wait long, long. <laughs> okay, what would they do in issue anyway? So then my team leader went in, and his name was Andy. Come, let's draw arms. So that's how our shift started for that day. That night, sorry. 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. was the, the shift. Lah. So it was a plain clothes shift, so we don't have any police vehicles. So we had to walk all around the shift, up and down, checking people and they're on the other shift. So that shift, cut story short, it was a very dry shift. By 3.30 a.m., four of us were actually quite near North Point. Then I was thinking, oh, okay, I can forget about getting a good rest tonight. Then my teammate said, Andy said, let's go to McDonald's. Let's have our breakfast. Relax. Then probably just call it a day by 5 p.m. we can just make that arms. So we were at McDonald's in North Point. Back then, North Point, the old, okay, I'm not sure if you're familiar with North Point, that's a day where there is a construction site, that's where the bus interchange used to be. Okay, back that time, there was a bus interchange there. Okay, so we ordered our meal, then we were sitting at the El Fresco area because we 
police officers smoke a lot. So they smoke out there. Then after we finish eating, we just okay, then we notice I noticed these two Chinese guys, shape four, t shirt and jeans, both of them walking around. Then they happen to stop by a table. Then he kinda of gave my teammate a look lah. My teammate has a lot of Uncom or tattoo lah. Okay? <laughs> so but they didn't notice because they were heavily they were just smoking and talking. Then they all smoke pile, then I was wondering, hmm, I'm observant, right? I'm a overthinker anyway, right? So I was looking, they look familiar. But they look fishy at the same time. So they when they walk about 20 meters ahead, right, they walk into the shop shop houses. Then I noticed the two of them were actually looking at a piece of paper and they were pointing at the blocks around. Maybe it's like 3 plus a.m. in the morning. See, hmm, we better check them out. So I told Andy, Andy, I think we should check them out. They look suspicious. So I said, okay, nothing to do, right? Okay, God, let's go. So, four of us, <laughs> so imagine four of us walking behind, about 10 meters of, in front of us, right? The two guys, lah. I think they suspected, because after we walked a few meters, they split. So, one guy continued walking on the shop houses, it was 900 plus neighborhood. The other guy turned around to enter the car park. So, my other teammates, Gabriel and Rashid, they followed the other guy, me and Andy, because Andy is the older guy, so in case he needs to run, I'm there to rest. <laughs> okay. And his boys have it worse. Huh? So we split. Then as me and Andy, we were side by side. We were looking at this guy. He kind of realized that we were following him. Then he just kind of threw something on the grass patch beside. Then he started to run. Then Andy said, Tanu, go! <laughs> so I had to run. So I ran. Well, this guy can really run, man. I, <laughs> I really ran. I, I dropped my walkie-talkie. But Andy's behind, so he can pick it up for me. So we were, as we ran, he got cornered at the loading and loading bay of one of the car, one of the blocks lah. So I stopped him. Then I asked him why, why did he run away? But apparently he can't understand English. So I wait for Andy to come. So he told about quite some time back lah. <laughs> so once he reaches me, then basically he start asking this guy a lot of questions lah. Then he, apparently this guy said he ran because he thought we were gonna rob him. Fair enough. <laughs> so then I, then I told him, but this guy looks very fishy lah. I think there's something about him lah. Then I said, hmm, but this guy looks familiar. Could it be the, the one that D.I.B. was talking about? Then he said, then he said, Chen the ma! Then he said, you sure not? You think too much not sometimes. He said, come to you sure, man. I said, hey, but he looks familiar, eh? like the photo I saw. Because the photo was in colour. It was this day footage. So I said, I remember this guy kind of threw something or dropped something. So then I told him, you take care of this guy. I'm going to go back to the grass patch. Then I found this crumpled piece of paper. And beside it was actually a car key la, with an alarm. So when I opened the crumpled paper, it was actually a map of issue with all the different blocks. What was this guy doing anyway? Right? So then I brought the shoes to Andy and he said, Hey, you need the map for what? He said, Oh, I'm looking for my friend's house. When he just said he just landed today. And he said this car key is not his. So when we were then I, I just pressed the unlock button. Apparently the car at the loading bay unlocked. <laughs> so I hmm. <laughs> so I thought, Andy, wanna open up? He said, is this your car? So Andy was a very fierce looking graphic guy with tattoos. Okay, not on his face though, but yeah, on his tattoos. <laughs> so he, when he kept pressing off, pressing off, he said, yeah, this is my car. So when he opened the boot, we found saws, we saw screwdrivers, we found a map of Hong Kong, a map of Malaysia, <laughs> apparently. So Gabriel and the other, uh, Rashi brought the other guy to the car. And guess what? Those two were actually the serial housebreakers that we were looking for lah. So I got my good arrest. The, the third guy was arrested in their hotel in Hotel 81 in Yelang lah. I don't know what he was doing there, but I wasn't there, so they were arrested. So this is one example where you, you observe it and you're desperate, right? And you think too much sometimes, right? It might just come true, okay? And the other thing about overthinking is that they are actually famous people, creative geniuses like your scientists. Scientists are actually overthinkers. If you didn't, didn't think of too much, right? Probably won't invent new stuff. Okay, and uh, besides scientists as well, the late Lee Kuan Yew, <laughs> he's also one of those people who overthink. Like, it's not meant as a insult, it's meant as a compliment. Um, there was this story when, uh, you know when you're in the police force, they always talk about, oh, I want to go to security command. It's like a, where you become bodyguards for the, basically the ministers and all that. So there was this story about Mr. Lee, like, there's this very experienced bodyguard. Okay, but he wasn't attached to Mr. Lee back then. So he was eventually attached to Mr. Lee. And Mr. Lee had, uh, apparently they, he attended one function. So as the car came in, stopped, this guy, he helped to open the door. Then Mr. Lee stepped out. But before he stepped out, we actually handed him a bag. And this guy took it, his right hand. Then Mr. Lee came out of the car, looked at him, asked 
asked him, are you a right hander? Then he said, yes I am. Then Mr. Lee looked up and down again, then the door closed, then basically the kids ended there. The next day, when this guy came to report to work, apparently he was called in to the office. Lah. Then he got, a, basically he got scolded by his, uh, his superior and he got a transfer. He was asking why. He said, Mr. Lee said, you are a right hander. You're, you have a holster on your left, so means you're a right hander. And you admitted you're a right hander to Mr. Lee. So Mr. Lee asked, what if I fall down? Will you be able to catch me? What if someone wants to shoot me? Will you be able to block me in time? Will you be fast enough? If you need to draw your weapon, will you be able to draw your weapon with your hand, your right hand carrying my bag? So basically, those security concerns, Mr. Lee thinks about all this, which most people might not even think about. Okay, so overthinking can actually give you a perspective that most people won't even know or even think about. Okay, so the validity of that story is circulating, but I'm not sure whether it's true. Okay, but it's possibly sounds like Mr. Lee to me. <laughs> okay. Um, so those are famous people, uh, but then again, there are cases where actually overthinking can actually put you in a tough spot. Like for me, it actually put me in distress. Um, this happened back in 2005. Okay, back then I was in JC2, it was in January. So I was part of this um, National Youth Exchange Program between Singapore and Malaysia. Apparently it was, back in 05, it was happening for about three years. So that was the fourth year. So what happens is that 30 youths from Singapore, 30 youths from Malaysia were actually come together, um, one of the countries is the whole state, lah. so they will have a range of programs. So for that year, it was going to be held in Malaysia, so um, one of the programs was actually a homestay and an all palm plantation. Lah. So imagine, it's very nice during the day, lah, but it's freaking creepy at night. Lah. Okay, so um, usually one Singaporean and one Malaysian will be paired up, okay, so they will be attached to a local family in the all palm plantation, then you will stay there for two nights, the first three days, two nights over there. So. Me and my counterpart was this guy called Sham. La. Apparently he's the son of a very famous director in Malaysia. But I've, I don't know the father, but I know the movies. La. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> okay, so me and Sham, first day, it was the first, there's a lot of programs. La. So, you know when you're, seven, when you're 18, okay, you get to hang out, right, there's no, there's no curfew. So, but after the programs, I hang out one of the houses, then we basically I didn't sleep at my home. La. Okay, so Sham sleep. Sleep, sleep there. La. So this is how the room looks like. So this is the room, it's not a prison. La. It's a homestay. The elderly couple is a very nice couple. Okay, so this is the room. It's a double decker bed by the way. Okay, Sham preferred the lower deck. I preferred the upper deck. Okay, okay. So good arrangement. So the first night, um, I didn't sleep there. Then the next morning, the second morning, Sham asked me, hey, you didn't come back yesterday. Ah? And I say, no, yeah, why? He said, in the middle of the night, ah, it's like if somebody upstairs uh, keep tossing and turning around. <laughs> I say, Shao, first time I'm in an old palm plantation, you keep telling me, you want to tell me? <laughs> How do you expect to sleep on the top of the bed? <laughs> then I uh, tell you, maybe my, my, my imagination, and uh, then you just kept it to yourself, man. <laughs> okay? So anyway, that was what, what happened. Uh. So the second night, yeah, I slept there. You know, the, full, the second day was packed program. Uh. We had team building again, so it's easy to fall asleep. So I fell asleep. So at that second night, Sham was below me and I went top. Have you ever been uh, in a situation where you were sleeping, suddenly you just woke up? Yep. Yeah. Got, uh? <laughs> okay, that happened to me that night. <laughs> okay, so I was sleeping. Then it just had to be that night. I just jolted up. Oh wait. So I was, then when I woke up, like, <sighs> okay, now I had to fall asleep again. Then I was about to fall asleep, right? I kind of spotted something. So this is my, where my head is. I kind of spotted like there's something <laughs> sitting on the cover. There's <laughs> something. Uh. Then, oh my god, what is that? Okay. Then, you know, uh, I'm not too sure whether you've heard it before. People say ghosts can actually hear your thoughts or read your mind. Right? Actually, it's true. La. I think from this situation. And guess what? I'm also an overthinker. Right? That's a lot of things happening. My <laughs> so as I was... I, at a point in time, I was thinking, oh my god, what is that? I don't remember seeing this other couple having any grandkids around. I remember them telling me that they have, all their kids are all abroad now. What is a pilot? What is a... All those thoughts coming to my mind. Like, do they have kids? I don't remember seeing kids. <laughs> and then I was thinking, oh, maybe I should uh, try to go to sleep. Then, basically, this silhouette was actually a small boy. Probably bald. I couldn't see. Just a silhouette sitting like that, looking at me. <laughs> and he was clapping. Yay, yay, Himalaya. Yay, yay, he's away. Yay, he's away. You know, when I heard that, I, dude, please give me a few more minutes. <laughs> so, when it happens, right, I was thinking, oh, you know, should I pray? But then again, 
hey, what if I pray and it goes to him so he becomes angry? <laughs> that thought came to my mind as well. Then I said, oh, maybe I should just, oh, then, oh, just go away and play somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, come and play. Yeah, yeah, come and play. And then say, oh, then I noticed it was, it feels like it's coming closer to me. Like it was reaching out. But I was just like that. Then I said, oh, please don't come, please don't come, so close. Then, say, then he keeps coming closer and closer and closer. At that point in time, I shouted lah. Basically, to be honest, I at least screamed like a girl. Ah! And I kind of think, you know, when I screamed out, right? Shah woke up, oh! Then he on the light. Then there was everything, basically, the thing wasn't there anymore. Then I asked him, hey, dude, usually when we watch movies, right? He said, oh, you just, the, you, the, the actor, which, oh, uh, no, I didn't see nothing. Probably it's just a nightmare. For me, I shared everything to him. I was so freaking scared, I want to make sure somebody else suffers with me. So I told him, I told him, the story said, oh. We ended up sleeping at his bed. <laughs> Two 18 year old boys <laughs> sleeping together. Uh, anyway, it was, it was cold at night, la, so probably it was the temperature, so it helped. La. Okay? <laughs> we were facing opposite directions. Just so you know. <laughs> okay? So that was a situation where overthinking actually kind of put me in quite a fair of distress. If I didn't think too much, probably I would just scream, it would have ended. <laughs> but it didn't. So, based on that, um, what I can say is that overthinking okay, actually does have its merits. It's, it's good because you even have famous people like Mr. Lee, your Einstein, you can Google it and it's, they, they say that they are overthinkers. Okay, they are good things. Uh. So, the next time someone tells you, don't think too much, just tell them the same thing. Lah. Okay, but then again, what do I know? I may be overthinking. Uh. <laughs>